Hello and welcome back to Miss Finance. Today we're going to have a look at mastering consolidated statements of financial position. So as always, let's jump straight into it. Now, in order to fully understand how to consolidate a set of financial statements, we need to understand that there's something called IFRS 3. And what that is, is business combinations. So IFRS 3 states that the definition of a business combination is a transaction or other event in which an acquirer obtains control of one or more businesses. Transactions sometimes referred to as true mergers or mergers of equals are also business combinations as that term is used in IFRS 3. So how might a business combination work? You might have a situation where one company may purchase the shares of another company or they may purchase the net assets of a business rather than the equity or even it might be as a result of a reorganisation. So let's move on to IFRS 10. Now IFRS 10 covers the consolidated financial statements and IFRS 10 establishes principles for the presentation and preparation of consolidated financial statements. Now to meet this objective, it requires an entity that controls another, i.e. a parent, to present consolidated financial statements subject to limited exemptions. It defines control and confirms control as the basis for consolidation. It also provides guidance on how to apply the definition. And finally, it also provides guidance on preparing consolidated financial statements. So next, let's have a look at control. So how is control defined? An entity controls another if it has all of the following. So if it has power of the investee, exposure or rights to variable returns, and if it has the ability to use its power over the investee to affect the amount of the investor's returns. Now it's very important that we understand how to establish the percentage ownership and control. So let's work this out together. So if we take the total number of shares that are owned in the subsidiary by the parent, then divide this number by the total number of shares in that subsidiary. Multiply this by 100, and if this is more than 50%, then unless any other information is provided, it is assumed that a parent has control here. So let's move on to the goodwill calculation. So goodwill is the difference between the price that is paid to acquire control of a business and the fair value of its net assets. So it's almost the bit that you've overpaid on top of what the net assets are showing in the statement of financial position. So to work out goodwill, we take the consideration, we add on the non-controlling interest, then we take off the net assets of this subsidiary at the acquisition date. Note that's very important, at the acquisition date. Then that gets us to the goodwill at acquisition. But if there's any impairment, then we also need to take that off. So we're then left with the goodwill in the statement of financial position. So let's take a closer look at how to work out Annex 2 net assets of the subsidiary at the acquisition date. So what we need to do is find the subsidiary's share capital on the statement of financial position, add the subsidiary's retained earnings, add any other reserves, and then add the difference between the fair value and the carrying amount of the subsidiary's net assets at the acquisition date. In other words, the goodwill. Now let's have a look at the non-controlling interest calculation in detail. So this represents the shareholders that are not part of the group, i.e. where the parent owns, let's say, 60% of the company, but the other 40% is owned by a number of private investors. We call those the non-controlling interest. Now, take note here, because when we're putting together the statement of financial position at consolidated level, we want to be taking 100% of the revenue, expenses, assets and liabilities to the parents' consolidated profit and loss and other comprehensive income and statement of financial position. And it doesn't matter if we don't own 100% of that subsidiary, we take 100% of everything into consideration. Then finally, if we own less than 100% of the shares, then an amount is calculated for both the statement of comprehensive income and the statement of financial position for the non-controlling interest element. And we work out the non-controlling interest by taking the subsidiary's net assets at acquisition and multiplying it by the non-controlling interest percentage. So if that was 40%, we take the subsidiary's net assets at acquisition and times by 40%. 
So let's have a look in closer detail at how we work out the non-controlling interest elements of the statement of financial position and in the statement of profit and loss. So with the statement of financial position, we take the share capital attributable to the non-controlling interest. We add on the retaining earnings attributable to the non-controlling interest and we take into account any revaluations that are attributable to the non-controlling interest and that gets us to how much relates to the non-controlling interest. Now in Annex 1, the way we work that out is by taking whatever the percentage is that is non-controlling interest and we times that by the share capital at the period end. So take note here again that that's at the period end. Now with Annex 2, working out the retained earnings attributable, we take the non-controlling interest percentage so again, if that was 40%, we times that by the subsidiary's retained earnings at period end. And then Annex 3, we take again the non-controlling interest percentage, so the 40%, times by the subsidiary's other reserves at period end, if there are any at all. Now, if we were to look at the statement of profit and loss, we want to take the non-controlling interest percentage of that subsidiary's profit after tax. So again, if we own 60% to work out the other element that we're not entitled to that relates to other shareholders, then that would be 40% in this case times by whatever the profit after tax was in that particular subsidiary. Next, let's have a look at the group retained earnings. So a common mistake that people make is that the group's profits cannot be worked out by just adding the retained earnings of both the parents and the subsidiary. It doesn't work that way. The reason it doesn't work that way is because some of the subsidiary's retained earnings could have been earned before they were taken over and controlled by the group. So when we work this out, we can only look at the profit that's attributable to the parent after they gained control. So let's have a look at how the group retained earnings is worked out. So what we want to do is take 100% of the parent's retained earnings at period end. Then we want to add just the parent's share of the subsidiary's retained earnings. So again, if this was 60% that the parent owns of that subsidiary, we would take 60% of those retained earnings. Then we take off any impairment of goodwill to get us to the total group retained earnings. Now to work out Annex 1, Again, we take the parent's percentage, multiply that by the subsidiary's retained earnings at period end, less the subsidiary's retained earnings at the date of acquisition. So what you're doing there is just multiplying the parent's percentage times by the profits in effect since they took control of that subsidiary. So now let's have a look at two examples. So in example one, Smittens Limited has just bought 80% of the shares of Mitty halfway through their year end. Both companies have a year end of the 31st of December 2020 and we've been asked to prepare a consolidated financial position. So if we have a look, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to prepare a percentage ownership and control circle. So we can see here that the parent owns 80% of the subsidiary. Next, if we have a look on the left, as at the 30th of June, when Smittens took control of Mitty because they own 80%, so that's more than the 50%, so they definitely have control here. You can see that the assets in Mitty are 110k for PPE, 40k for current assets, so we've got 150k of total assets. They have 100k of share capital, they've got no retained earnings, so no profits, no loss, and current liabilities of 50k. So if we first look at working out goodwill, we're going to take the consideration, so the investment of 140k, and then we're going to work out the non-controlling interest. So to work that out, non-controlling interest owns 20% of the net assets of acquisition. So the net assets here are the 150k of total assets minus current liabilities of 50k. So 20% of 100k is 20k, and then we're going to take half the net assets of the subsidiary at acquisition date. So those net assets at acquisition date were 100k. So that gets us to goodwill at acquisition of 60k. There's no impairment, so that means that goodwill and statement of financial position here is 60k. So the next thing we want to work out is the non-controlling interest. Now what we've got on the left here is the statement of financial position 
at the year end or the period end, which was the 1st of December. So we can see here that retained earnings is now 30k in MITI, whereas it didn't have any before, and current assets is now 70k. So if we have a look at working out the non-controlling interest, we want to take the share capital, that's attributable to the non-controlling interest, so they own 20% of the share capital. So 20% times by 100k in MITI's share capital gets you to 20k. Next, we want to look at retained earnings that are attributable to the non-controlling interest. So they have 30k of retained earnings at the period end. They own 20% of that. So 30k times 20% gets you 6k. Now there's been no revaluation attributable to the non-controlling interest. So that's zero. So our total non-controlling interest for the statement of financial position is 26k. Now if we have a look at the statement of profit and loss, Again, there's been 30k of retained earnings since they were acquired, so they've had 30k of profit. So the non-controlling interest owns 20% of that. So again, if we take 20% times by 30k, that gives us 6k. So that would be sat on the statement of profit and loss. And finally, we have the group retained earnings. So we want to take 100% of the parents retained earnings and we can see that the 31st of December, Smitten's had 110K of retained earnings. Then we want to take Smitten's percentage of Mitty's retained earnings. So Smitten's now owns 80% of their retained earnings and their retained earnings at year end was 30K. So if you take 30K times by 80%, that gives you 24K. There's been no impairment, so total group retained earnings here is 134k. Now we need to put this into a consolidated financial position. So if we take all of Smitten's statement of financial position and put that into the first column here, we're then going to add in these adjustments. So we had goodwill of 60k that we worked out in the goodwill calculation. We want to add in 100% of all of Mitten's statement of financial position, except for retained earnings. So PPE is 110k, so we're going to add that in. We're going to take out this investment in Mitten's at costs, and then we're going to add in the 70k of current assets that they have. Then we're going to add on a new line for non-controlling interest, which was 26k that we worked out, and then our retained earnings was 24k, and then we're going to add in their current liabilities of 50k. So all in all, when we add those up to the final column, we have 370k of total assets and 370k of total equity and liabilities. So you can see there how that's been worked out. So let's move on to example two. So with this example, Harriet Limited purchased 70% of the shares in blues nine months into the year end. They both have a year end at the 31st of December 2020. There's impairment of 20k and profit after tax for blue at the year end was 90k, of which 40k was earned in October to December, and we need to prepare a consolidated financial position. So before we even look at this in detail, you can see that, that if, if Harriet bought those in nine months into the year, they bought them in September. So that profit between October and December of 40k, we need to just take a note of. So if we have a look at their statement of financial position at the 30th of September, you can see that Blue had PP of 110k, current assets of 170k, and then they had share capital of 100k, retained earnings of 160k, and current liabilities of 20k. So the first thing we're going to do, again, is establish the percentage ownership and control in this circle. So we have the parent owns 70% of this subsidiary, and they definitely have control because they own over 50%, and there's nothing else to indicate they don't have control here. So let's work out goodwill. So goodwill, we need to take into account the consideration, which was 210k. Next, we want to work out the non-controlling interest. So in this case, non-controlling interest is at 30% of the net assets at acquisition. So the net assets at acquisition is the 280k of total assets minus the current liabilities of 20k, which gives us 260k. So if you do 260k times by 30%, that gets you to 78k. So we're going to add that onto consideration. And then we're going to take off the net assets of the subsidiary acquisition date. So we're going to take off 260k to get us goodwill of 28k. Now, if you read the above text, you can see there's been impairment of 20k. So our actual goodwill in the statement of financial position is 8k because we take that impairment off. Next, we want to work out the non controlling interest. So on the left, we have the year end figures. So we can see their retained earnings is now 200k. So first of all, 
for blues. So we'll look at the share capital attributable to the non-controlling interest. So 30% of the share capital at the period end. So 100k of their share capital times by 30%. So that's 30k. Next, we want to add on the retained earnings that are attributable to the non-controlling interest. So the retained earnings at the year end was 200k. So times that by 30% gets you 60k. There's been no revaluation at all. So that's zero. So our total non-controlling interest on the statement of financial position is 90k. Next, if we look at the statement of profit and loss, we want to take 30% of the profit after tax. So we can see that profit after tax for blue at the year end was 90k in total. So we want to take 30% times by 90k and that gets you 27k. So that's what's going to be set of the statement of profit and loss for the non-controlling interest. Next, we have group retained earnings. So we want to take 100% of the parents retained earnings, which is 190k, so Harriet's, and then we want to take Harriet's percentage of Blue's retained earnings. So they own 70% of Blue's retained earnings, so 70% times by 40k. Now, the reason that we're times it by 40k is because 40k was the amount that was earned in October to December. So that's the only amount that they're actually entitled to. So they're not entitled to retained earnings before they took control. Next, we wanna take off goodwill of 20k. So that's going to give us 198k of group retained earnings in total. So finally, we're going to put together their statement of financial position after consolidation. So we're going to put all of Harriet's statement of financial position in that first column, and then we're going to adjust for the subsidiary. So we worked out goodwill at 8k, so we're going to add that on. We're going to add in 100% again of their assets and liabilities. So we're going to add in the full 110k for PPE, and then we're going to take out this investment line, so minus 210. The current assets in blue were 210k, and then our non-controlling interest we worked out at 90k. Now our retained earnings in total should end up at 198k. So our adjustment is going to be 8k because we already had 190k in our statement of financial position. Next, we're going to add on the current liabilities in blue so that's 20k so overall we've got total assets of 598k and total equity and liabilities of 598k so i hope you found this video useful consider subscribing so you don't miss out on any future tutorials and i shall see you on the next video